All right, now we're going to talk about humbling yourself when you are wrong. If you saw my uh, study that I did on the uh, Jeremiah chapter 10 thing, being the Christmas tree, you know, and the Christmas tree is condemned there, it's the idol. It isn't. Um, and I'll show you here real quickly. Go back to it. We're going to start in uh, Proverbs chapter 18 from the last study, if you were still there. But um, right here we have it. The way of the heathen I have written there with a little Christmas tree. You can see it right there. And, you know, I was deceived by that Doc Marquis devil guy. That guy's wicked. And I thought, oh, yeah, Chris, it's the Christmas tree. Um, no, it isn't. And if you look at it, it's actually an idol that's gilded with gold. Um, a carved wooden idol. It has nothing to do with a Christmas tree. There's no mention of December or the winter solstice or Yule or Saturnalia or, you know, whatever. Um, it's not there. Okay. So don't fall for that whole Jeremiah chapter 10 thing. But, you know, I took stands and I was making problems in my family and everything else. And then actually I studied it a little bit more and I realized, oh, I was deceived by this Doc Marquis guy. And I had to go around to tell people I was wrong. And I was telling people with new versions and CCM types of people, relatives and whatnot, that I was wrong. And um, having to apologize for, for going overboard on a doctrine. Uh, that's called humbling yourself. And a lot of you people out there, you need to humble yourselves because you've been lied to and you're perpetuating those lies on the holiday issue. God doesn't care. You don't want to celebrate the holiday? That's up to you. Fine, whatever. But if you're going around and lying about all this stuff, and well, there's pagan things that happen on holidays, and there's bad things that happen. And, yes, and there's bad things that are done with guns. Does that make a gun wrong? There are bad things that are done in cars. Then I guess we shouldn't drive cars because people speed and people rob banks and use a car as a getaway vehicle. You're using very weak arguments. And what you need to do, and I believe every Christian at some point in time is going to get deceived on something, mark my words, and God allows it to happen to see if you will humble yourself and admit that you were wrong. Let's look about it. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 13. He that answereth the matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. One of the key scriptures in the Bible there. You answer a matter before you hear it. Like a lot of people did, you know, when they, they don't even watch my video. They just post comments and, you know, you, uh, you aren't answering such and such. I talked about that in the study. People have done that to me for years. So it's folly and shame to you. But now look at verse 12. Go up one verse before uh, verse 13. Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty. Pride goeth before destruction. Hmm. And before honor is humility. You want to be an honorable man or a woman? I want God to, to be, you know, I want to be honored by God. I'll say it that way. Um, God will put you through times where you're going to have to admit that you were wrong. Uh, for many years, I taught the imminent rapture theory and whatever else that Jesus could come back at any time. Well, that's true when you get close to that resurrection time area there and whatever else. But Jesus couldn't have come 200 years ago. That's nonsense. There'd be 200 years between the resurrection of the body of Christ and the Antichrist showing up? That doesn't make any sense. Now, God has it all timed out. Now, when that time period comes, there's not going to be, you know, oh, hey, we know for sure that uh, it's going to happen on Tuesday at 8 o'clock or something in the morning. We aren't going to know. Of course not. And then it will be imminent when that time period comes. But there's some prophetic type of stuff I believe has to happen before we leave. So it could be years yet out into the future. I have no idea. But to say that it could have happened at any time, which the imminent rapture teaches, that's wrong. And I had to come to that point and realize I'd been preaching something false for many years. And, you know, it puts you into this constant thing of, well, don't bother doing anything with your life. Don't bother getting married and don't bother having children and don't bother trying to have a house or do anything because Jesus could come today. You know, and you get into that whole mindset so uh before the lord could honor me and you know use me in ministry 
there had to be some experiences that I had to go through where I had to admit that I was wrong. I've had to do that different times. Sometimes I've, I've done the wrong thing and I had to actually go up to people and say, oh, excuse me. I had to go around with a neighbor at one point in time. And uh, I was in the wrong. And I had to go back over and, and he, you know, oh, you're back to argue more. And I went up and I said, hey, I'm sorry. And I said, I was wrong. I didn't handle that thing the right way. And he actually started crying. And I started crying as well. And I said, I said I'm really sorry about it. And he said, hey, you know, people are having a hard time. And we, we talked about it and everything else. Humility. Humble yourself. Coming up here to Maine the one time and I was at a truck stop and or like a, you know, not a truck stop, but a rest stop, excuse me. And I was, I was, saw a truck tractor trailer coming in and I thought, oh, I want to get out and, and before him because I had this, you know, U-Haul and I had a, a trailer out back with my pickup truck on it, like a vehicle car carrier. And I thought, hey, I want to get out in front of, you know, before this guy comes in so he can back into this spot because the parking lot was really full. So I took off and, you know, got out of there. It wasn't real close or anything. And a um, number of miles up the road, I was there getting fuel for the thing, filling it up. And this guy pulls in behind me and he gets out and he's yelling at me and everything. And I said, I said, I'm sorry. Oh, well, you know, well, oh, well, sure, you know. And it changed everything. Why? Because I humbled myself. You know, when the guy was smaller than me, I could have, you know, cleaned his clock or something. But, you know, I said, hey, I'm sorry. I did the wrong thing there. And if you want to be um, well favored of the Lord, you know, honor before honor, there's going to come that time of, of the, when the Lord is going to put you into a situation, you're going to have to humble yourself. Humility. Proverbs chapter 15. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 31 through 33. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. Uh, if you're listening to me and you're saying, yeah, Brother Brian really has been kicking a lot of my sins and whatever else, um, that's good. And uh, if it's something the Holy Spirit's convicting you of and you can see it plainly in Scripture, yeah, I'm doing this wrong, then you better change. And you're wise if you do. Verse 32, He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. But he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. The fear of the Lord is instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. There it is again. But notice there, verse 32, He that refuses, refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. Um, a lot of advice that I give, you might say it was kind of weird and whatever. What's he talking to me about, you know, eating the right foods and, and getting the right times of sleep and when you should go to bed and whatever. Um I'm trying to show you those things because I myself have had a really hard time with that stuff over the years. I've eaten a lot of junk food. You know, my worst enemies out there, you shouldn't be eating fast food. Okay, that stuff's really bad for you. Uh, and I speak from great experience. I mean, I used to eat it sometimes two or three times a day. So, uh, yeah, I know what it does to your body. I know what it does to your health. Um, listen to my reproof. Listen to correction that comes from me. And if you see that you're wrong, you say, oh, man, I really should listen to this. Well, then you're going to be doing good for your soul, good for your body as well. And really, what's it all about? Verse 33, the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. I fear God. It isn't about I have to you know, fall in line with cult leader Brian or something like that. No, I fear the Lord. And so I want that instruction of wisdom that he gets to me. Hey, uh, Brian said this, that he's had a lot of experience with fast food and he switched to natural health type of stuff. I'm not talking about being a vegetarian or something like that. I'm far from being a vegetarian. You know, eat good, healthy food. Food with no ingredients list, okay? Or very few ingredients. The fewer the ingredients, the better. Um, and you'll feel better. Okay, that's the stuff that God made. That's what you should be focusing on. Go next to Proverbs 22, verse 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Hmm. Um, 
why would anybody fight against that? Riches and honor and life? Uh, I don't think you should fight against those things. Uh, that's usually pretty positive. Okay, there. But how do you get it? By humility. Oh, no, no. Actually, the, the way to get riches is to go down and join the Masonic Lodge and to get in with the right people. And, you know, it's, it's who you know, if you know what I mean. And, uh, you know, you have to ask one to be one or whatever else and all this other stuff. No, that's the way that you get into Satan's system and ultimately into hell. All right. The way to have riches, and riches doesn't just mean money, by the way. Uh, there's a lot of people that, you know, we have been raised to be obedient slaves and whatever else. And, and uh, oh, riches. Oh, that guy's rich. He's got millions of dollars. Uh, no, actually, riches come in a lot of different ways. There's a lot of very wealthy people that have very poor health right now. that are struggling up here. They're mental nutcases. Right, I'm sure that uh, Sleepy Joe Biden, the um, puppet president of this country, he's not the leader of this country. Um, Cardinal Timothy Dolan is the leader of this country. Timothy Dolan, Card or uh, President Dolan, um, the, the cardinal there in New York City. But uh, Sleepy Joe Biden, I bet you he has a lot of money. But what's it worth when you're losing your mind? And you're just this, this vessel for Satan to inhabit and whatever, and he's just walking around and he's half tired, just out of it all the time. That's not riches. Okay, that's a somebody that's sold their soul to the devil. Okay, uh, riches can come in a lot of different ways. There's a lot of people that don't have much money and yet they're very rich. Rich in faith. Uh, rich in good works before the Lord. Have a good uh, marriage. You know, you know, how many people have good marriages? Really, truly good marriages. If you have a good marriage, thank the Lord for it. Because there aren't that many out there anymore. Um, good children, good roof over your head, good clothing, some good food. That's riches. Okay? And how's it come? Through, through humility and fearing God and listening to instruction. Colossians chapter 2, which we covered in the last study, but we'll hit it again here. Colossians chapter 2, verse 18. Not going to read the whole chapter, but. Colossians 2.18 Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Voluntary humility. <laughs> okay. Um, I remember there was a comic strip years ago and this uh, guy is trying to date this girl or something and, and um, he said, so what, you know, what are you looking for in a guy? And she said, well, just a, a guy that's a intelligent and humble and this guy says oh he says wow oh, i'm i definitely am humble he said in fact if there was an award for humility i would probably get it <laughs> and this girl's rolling her eyes you know thinking yeah right uh, you don't understand humility if you want to have a reward for it well there's a lot of people that have a voluntary humility they pick where they're they humble themselves um if you prove them wrong in something they'll never say oh you know hey i was wrong I'm sorry, would you please forgive me? No, they won't do that. Um, they pick and choose where they're humble, you know. So, involuntary humility, by the way, I've written all my notes over here is fake. It's not real. 1 Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5. I'll get there here. First Peter chapter 5, verse 1. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive... A crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder, elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Hmm. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of the preacher. <clears throat> uh, no, it doesn't say the preacher. Under the mighty hand of your church constitution. No, it doesn't say that. Catechism? 
Um, doctrines of the faith, uh, no. Uh, commentaries, Bible Institute in Education. No, it's under the mighty hand of God. Instruction of the Lord, fearing the Lord. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Think about the honor system that the Lord has at the judgment seat of Christ. Crowns you for your service to him. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Wouldn't it be nice to have the Lord say that to you? Uh, well, <clears throat> I'm going to get there through my intellectual prowess. No, you're not. Well, I'll get there for uh, <clears throat> my service, my duty. No, you won't. You'll get there through humility. Humble yourself. All of a sudden, you're there in your in your house, and um, you get to walk in. You're newly saved, and you look around and you think, um, "I guess I'll just I'll watch a movie or something here." And uh, while I'm eating supper tonight, and you get a Hollywood movie out, and you put it in, and all of a sudden it's blankety blank this and blankety blank that, and you think. Ugh, man, I didn't realize it had this much profanity in it. And the Lord says, uh, that's displeasing to me. Get rid of it. Well, but Lord, that's the Platinum Anniversary Edition. I don't know. Take that thing out of there. Break it in half and throw it in the trash. Down on your knees. Dear God, I'm sorry that I had that in my home. Lord, if there's anything else in here that's displeasing in thy sight, Lord... I'm sorry. Please show me. A week later. I haven't listened to that album in a while. You put this secular album in, you start listening to it. All of a sudden the Holy Spirit says, uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> I don't really like that. It's not singing praises to me. It's not really pleasing either. It's not even a traditional type of... Just rock music and whatever else, the country, you know, talking about a man leaving his wife and whatever. Uh, yeah. Okay, Lord, I'll get rid of it. And I won't go out and buy it again then, you know, later on when I get the itch or whatever. Once it's gone, it's gone. It's out of my life. Don't be one of those kinds of Christians either. I gave up my video games and my and my movies and whatever else, and then I went out and bought them again. <laughs> you know, um, that's not a humbling yourself. Humbling yourself is, hey, Lord, I'm wrong and I'm sorry and I won't ever do that again. That's what you're supposed to do. Humble yourself. Why? That He may exalt you in due time. Verse seven. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Casting all your cares upon him. Hmm. Verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. There's things that you're going through and you think, boy, nobody understands me. Uh there's some brethren out there that do. Uh, we all go through things. It's all, you know, the trying of your faith. It's what happens when you get saved. You know, I have no problem with alcoholism. Some of you do or did in your past. You might still be newly saved and you're struggling with it, whatever else. I never had a problem with alcohol. Okay. But uh, pornography addiction early on, you had a terrible time with it. I was genuinely born again and everything else. Oh, then it's okay. No, no. I had to humble myself. And I had to get victory over that sin. I Back, I preached a thing on the pornography epidemic. It's one of my most watched videos on YouTube. It's just an all, all an audio sermon. And I remember I, was, I wanted to preach it so bad, and it was just, I'm not clean long enough. I haven't had victory over the sin of looking at that stuff, that filth online. And I just prayed and prayed and, Lord, please, I need to get through this thing. And I had to humble myself. And it wasn't easy coming out and saying, you know, yeah, I was a pornography addict in the past and I was a pervert and everything. I had to humble myself. 
But I thought to myself, I'm not going to preach that sermon until I'm clean of this thing. Until I can feel it. There's definitely been a change. My attitude has changed. It's not just, what's well, been three days now. No, it needs to, I need to have victory over that before I can preach it. And the Lord gave me victory. And there were other sins of my past and things. Um, wasting a lot of time in video games. Oh, man. How many, not even hours. I mean, we're talking, add it all up, it'd be years of my life were wasted. Playing video games is terrible. What did I have to do? I had to humble myself. And I would pretty much conquered all video game addiction when I first got married, but I had this little, uh, you know, Apple iPod thing or something, and it had a few little uh, video game things on it, whatever. And so I would literally listen to the Bible, Alexander Scorby recordings, uh, while I was doing something, I had to wait or whatever, and I'd sit there and I'd be listening to the Bible, playing a little video game on this thing. And my wife came by and she said, I thought you said you gave up video games. Well, yeah, yeah, I don't have a Sony PlayStation anymore. Or showing my age there, you know, I know Xboxes and all the other stuff that's out there now, but never had any of that stuff that was after my time. Oh, yeah, I gave up all that stuff. I don't have, I got rid of all my computer, you know, online gaming stuff and whatever. Yeah, I don't, you know, she said, that's still a video game. All right, okay, I'll get rid of this iPod thing. I did. In there on my computer, I, I just have to wait for something to download. I'm going to play a, the computer game here. It's not even online stuff. It's just the little games that come with it. She said, still a video game. The Lord said, she's right. <laughs> uh, you get married, the Lord will a lot of times use that your wife to come along and convict you. And say, um, you know, the Lord will speak through her sometimes. And the Lord speaks through me to convict her of some things. Uh, she got rid of her earrings. The one time I said, you know, honey, um, the only mention of earrings in the New Testament or in the Bible are slaves warm. Why are you wearing earrings? And she just looked at me and she said, really? And I said, yeah. I showed her the scriptures. She went, it's just a little, like the little BB types or whatever, you know, not even big dangly earring. I took them out and she said, here, burn them. So are you sure? She said, burn them. I don't want them anymore. Okay, honey, yeah, sure, all right. We can help each other with that, by the way, too. Um, gently, lovingly, in humility. What does it say here? Ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Verse 5, yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. Hey, brother, I, I can I talk to you about something? I noticed that you have this or that you have that or whatever else. Um, you shouldn't be doing that. Can I show you the scriptures on that? Can I help you with it? We should help each other to get more righteous standards, to bring the righteous standards up among the body of Christ. That's what we should do there. Why? Oh, I don't know. So that uh, the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, verse 6. Be a good thing. I mean, I could just stand here in front of a camera and just give you nice little positive messages that never convict you and never point out your sin. And, you know, I could do that. I could tell you that good times are ahead and things are getting better and everything else. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to tell you the truth. I hope you take heed to what I'm saying. Second Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 22 through 26. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Well, yeah. Uh, all these, you know, Gnostic will worshipers of just belief and whatever else. Well, how do they, uh, do they flee also youthful lusts? Follow Righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart? Of course not. But they do get into verse 23. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. These people love their foolish and unlearned questions to gender strife. Verse 24. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, and meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. 
Uh, very interesting. See over there in 1 Peter chapter 5, when the devil's talked about as a roaring lion, um, lions don't roar until after they killed their prey. The devil's the accuser of the brethren, so if you can imagine up in heaven, he roars when he's killed somebody. He gets you to mess around in sin, he beguiles you through one of his Gnostic will worshippers, and they get you off task, off target, and they get you messing around with other things and whatever else, and unscriptural standards and things, and they think that you know, you're know you you're here serving the Lord and you're not really serving the Lord with all this stuff that you're giving up. Um, the Holy Spirit's not telling you to give that stuff up, but you ignore that and you say, okay, I'm, I'm going to start actually giving up things that the Bible says I'm supposed to give up, abstaining from all appearance of evil. Well, goodbye television and movies and a lot of stuff on the internet. Um, you know, uh, drunkenness and, and fornication and, you know, evil communication out of your mouth. And you start to give that stuff up. Uh, the devil, he's going to try to get you. Okay? And uh, one of the ways that he'll get you is through uh, pride. And it's interesting because uh, when you have a group of lions, you know what it's called? Pride. <laughs> hmm. Pride is uh, connected to lions. That's rather interesting. But the devil will uh, he'll do certain things to um, snare you, to get you in a snare. If you don't understand what a snare is, a snare is a wire that is basically, I don't think I have anything here that I could use. No, it's a cable. Um, it's a it's a it's a wire that is like this and it has a little loop at the top and you put something through it and it goes around and it hits a wider spot and the and the cable goes from this big like this to and it goes around and the more you pull the tighter it gets. And you can actually hunt animals that way. A lot of primitive survival people are into that kind of a thing. A lot of states it's illegal because it's kind of an unfair advantage on the animal. But because it's so effective but you put this snare out there, you go in, the harder you pull, the tighter it gets. And it eventually can kill an animal with that. But um, the devil can get you in things like that. And um, what you need to do is if you see a, a brother or a sister that's in that snare, um, imagine that's kind of like a wild animal. And they're struggling and they're pulling and the snare's getting tighter and tighter. In humility, you have to come over there. Well, I mean, if you see a rabbit and they're, they're there, you know, going like this, flailing, they got their foot caught in something or it's around their neck, you don't go over and say, stop, hey, stupid idiot. No. You have to come over and you say, oh, it's okay, it's all right, it's, it's okay, it's all right. And you calm down the rabbit and whatever else. You're coming in a, in a sort of a humble spirit uh, in, in humility and saying, let me help you. Let me help you get out of that. I remember meeting with a, a sister in the Lord the one time and she was struggling with cigarettes and, and some drugs and whatever else and said she was saved and whatever and heard her testimony and, you know, right testimony and everything. I didn't sit there and judge her for the the smell of cigarettes that was on her and, and things and she wasn't dressed, you know, modestly and whatever else. I didn't say a thing about it. Well, what does the Bible teach about this? She's asking me all these things from Scripture. Here, well, here, let me show you, sister. And I'm just... And showing you through the Bible and whatever else, she says, "Well, I'm on these drugs. I don't, I don't know what to do. You know, pharmaceutical drugs." Um, well, here's some advice. My wife is saying, "Okay, you know, here I can give you some advice on that." And she starts telling her, "Here's how you can get off of this, and here's how you can get off that drug, and whatever. Slowly wean yourself off these antidepressants and things. Help them to help recover them out of the snare of the devil by humility." And of course, part of that humility can come from your own experience, where you can say, you know, I had to humble myself at one point in time. I, I myself was uh, addicted to this thing that you're doing and whatever else. And I had to get to a point where I realized, yeah, this is wrong. I shouldn't be doing this. Humble yourself. And finally, 1 Timothy chapter 4 And this Christmas thing, I'll tell you what, there's so much division, and I saw so much of it in the comments, and just ticks me off when I see this thing. Any brother or sister out there that says, eh, just don't waste my time with it, that is fine, I don't have a problem with that. But this stuff of, it's of the devil, and you're serving the devil by 
not being against it and whatever else and, and things. I want you to think about a, another point here, which I did not make in that study, but I'm going to make it here. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Keep your hand there, or your finger there, and go to, over to Romans chapter 14. Now, I'm going to show you a little comparison here. Romans chapter 14, verse 1. Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. For God hath received him. All right? Now think about this. What's being said in Romans chapter 14? Eating meat, eating herbs, fine. It's up to you. Personal preference. It's a liberty issue. Okay? But what happens when somebody says, I command you to abstain from meat. Eating meat is wrong or eating a certain type of meat, pork or whatever else. That's wrong. How dare you? It's an unclean meat. You're not supposed to eat that. You know what that is? You go from a liberty issue here in Romans chapter 14 to a doctrine of devils over here in 1 Timothy chapter 4. You see? If you see something that's a liberty issue, and all of a sudden you start to make commands on people and say, no, it's not liberty, you are rejecting the word of God. Now, with that same thinking, what do we see in verse 5? One man esteemeth one day, Romans chapter 14, one man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every, man, every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. It's a liberty issue. Whatever you want to do on a certain day. Hey, you know what? We're going to have a special celebration today. Why? Because so many years ago, I got saved on this very day. Somebody would say, good for you. That's great. Well, you have to have the same celebration. No, I don't. No, I don't. Well, if you don't celebrate my day of salvation, then you're not really saved. No, no. Uh, hey, this is a special day. It's our anniversary or something like that. Or, you know, if you're married, whatever. It's liberty. It doesn't matter. But when you take something that God plainly says is liberty, right here in his word, Romans 14, verses 1 through 5, it's liberty. What you eat and what you do with certain days. If you want to esteem it to the Lord, fine. If you don't, fine. If you didn't deny that and reject that, then you are wrong. And you are actually practicing doctrines of devils. You better think about that. All right? And uh, what you need to do, if you're one of these anti-Christmas people, again, separating somebody that doesn't celebrate. They're not anti-Christmas. They're just saying, I eh, don't want anything to do with it. I have other things to do. Fine. But if you're one of these anti-Christmas people, you have to understand that you are off into doctrines of devils right now. And you are rejecting the word of the Lord. You know what I would suggest? I would suggest that you humble yourself. I would suggest that you get down on your knees and you say, God, I'm sorry. And if I have done videos or if I've done this or done that, and I've caused division among the body of Christ. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Why did I do that? You see, right now, I'm trying to recover you out of the snare of the devil. He took you captive. And you're causing unnecessary strife right now among, among the body of Christ. You better humble yourself. Because if you don't, you'll have no honor. God is not going to exalt you in due time. There'll be no reward. You're out there fighting an enemy that God never told you to fight in his word. Better think about that. Let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I do pray for these people out there that are just so wicked, that they're just causing so much strife and division over things that your word does not even talk about. Um, Lord, I do pray for them that they would humble themselves, as I've had to do in my past, and admit that I was wrong in certain doctrines and other things that I taught uh, that I got led astray. I got beguiled by Satan's uh, will-worshipping Gnostics. And Lord, for the young people out there that have gotten saved recently, I pray that they would stay true to your word and not um, 
get messed up. And then when they do get messed up, if they do get messed up, then I pray that they would humble themselves and admit to being wrong so that you would honor them. And um, Lord, I do pray that you would help us to all stay focused on what matters most. There's a lost world out there, Lord, that's dying every day and going to hell. Um, the church in America is in a shambles, Lord. Things are falling apart. People are turning, more people are turning against the King James Bible and turning against the old hymns that bring honor and glory to thy name. Lord, those are our fights. Those are, that's the, the battlefront. The Catholics are coming to power in this country. This nation is being destroyed on purpose. That's what we need to fight against, Lord, and not fight over things like diet and holidays and whatever else, Lord. Please, Lord, I pray that thy saints would humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways. Lord, we all need to do that. And if these people out there that are coming out against Christmas and they're inwardly messing around with all sorts of other things, I pray, Lord, that your judgment would hit them and um, that you would stop their lying mouths. And I ask all of these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So that's going to be it for this study. Um, I do really hope and pray that uh, you take heed. What more can I say? I, it's just, I've seen so many people get messed up over the years, and it just always bothers me. There are some people that I think, yeah, okay, that you know, I didn't think that they were real from the beginning, but others I, I really believed that they were legitimate. And then they just fall away, get right back to being an atheist or whatever else. And it bothers me. I don't like to see that. Um, so uh, please do stay true to the Word of God. Um, just a real quick announcement here at the end of this. Um, I don't really even know how to request prayer for this because uh, it's kind of a weird situation. Um, my father right now is in the hospital dying. And um, he's been killed by the trinity, so to speak, of uh, uh, elderly genocide, I will say it that way. I say, what's that? Bad nutrition, lazy boy recliners, and television. Those three things have killed more elderly people than I don't even know what else, you know. Um, years and years, my dad was just... Uh, eating junk food and, and not exercising and whatever else and you know um, it's terrible and I knew that the axe was going to fall eventually and and um, just sitting around watching television you know and he was very active growing up you know he'd be out in the woods splitting firewood and he played sports he was in softball and things which I never agreed with that but uh, he was active it's my point he was a very strong uh, man and uh, just let his health go and and uh, basically he fell over and and uh, had the ambulance come and they helped him back up again and you wanted to go to the hospital and he said no and it was early December when this happened and um, and so you know he went out and I had a I made a rustic chair for him and and a really nice one big one you know you kind of sit up a little bit higher and real beautiful chair. It was in different art galleries and it didn't sell. So I just said, you know what, dad, just keep it. You can have it in your house. And so it's his chair, special chair. He likes to sit in that one. He's not in his lazy boy recliner. And so he's sitting in the chair and my mother was telling me the story about this. And, and, uh, and he said, I'm going to walk over. He has a walker, you know, and I think he's 80, oh boy, I can't even think 84, I think right now, something like that. And, um, I did a video a while back with him in it, but uh, when we went down to Pennsylvania a couple years ago, but, um, excuse me, he got his walker and he said, I'm going to walk over and sit in my lazy boy recliner and watch some, watch the news and whatever else. And she said, are you sure you want to do that? And about that time she heard, bang, he went down again, fell again. And she was trying to get him up and he screamed, my heart, oh, my, my, or my chest, oh, and he had a heart attack. And so they obviously called the ambulance and they got him in there and, and, um, and he was not doing very good for a while. And, um, last I heard, I haven't heard in a, in a couple of days, but last I heard, he's just basically in 
hospice care right now and they're they're um he's still alive but he's they don't have him on any kind of life support or whatever else but they just you know he's just laying there pretty much unconscious and and uh, the bad thing is I can't go down and actually even see him right now which is really a um it's very hard and I, I don't want to talk about it a whole lot because it's 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 hard for me but um just the the work that we have here and uh, the only vehicle that could make the trip um, has a major oil leak right now and our old ambulance that we had that's the only way that we'd be able to go down and and um, the oil pan the seal is shot and it's just leaking oil all over the place I was driving it that way for a while but it's just getting really bad and this particular year 1999 e450 ford um you have to actually pull the whole motor out to change the to get the oil pan off that's what the mechanic told me you know he said we did one you know earlier that year when i had gone up um about a year ago i guess um when i had it inspected and uh and he said yeah he said these things are terrible to get the oil pan gasket there you know the, the seal and so I'm kind of in a really weird situation right now. Um, my dad's a professing Christian, but was not was not a lot of conviction about watching television, and we got in a lot of arguments over that before I got married. And um, so I don't know. Uh, just pr pray for me as as I'm going through this time. It's it's weird, you know, to know everything that's going on um my mother i asked her i said did he ever have any of the covid vaccines and she said no he didn't um some of what he was displaying some of the health stuff that i'm hearing about sounds like he was vaccinated i don't think my mother's lying to me but you know if he got it he might have gotten it without her knowledge of it um or they might have given it to him when he was in the hospital he was in the hospital a year ago actually got really sick and then he was came back home and he was at home for a while and so you know um, if you're out there and you're an older person uh, please please do everything that you can to get in good health um, get active do things do not get in these lazy boy recliners I, honestly I'm not going to judge people for having lazy boy recliners don't get me wrong it's not some kind of satanic heresy in Acts chapter so-and-so they condemned it no <laughs> no but uh, I I'm convinced I've known of so many stories of older people that they find them dead in their lazy boy recliner and when you think about it you sit down in that thing and it's really just all that foam which is toxic it puts off toxic chemicals you know that you're breathing in but you're sitting there in the thing and you pull the little handle and your the little leg thing comes up your feet are at the same height a lot of times as your heart. So you're sitting there and you have your, I can't get my leg up high enough. You have your, you, you know, you have your legs way up like this. Still can't get it high enough for the camera. Like that, your feet are at the same level as your heart. And you're reclined back like this watching television, kind of looking down between your feet. Not really all that good for your health. You're not really supposed to be elevating your feet up to that level very bad oh it's comfortable and everything yeah so um so i'd appreciate prayer on that uh you know we live about 19 19 or so hours away in terms of driving so you know uh we're dealing with this thief thing again i'm you know i'm thinking okay if i go down i'm gone for a couple days they watch our property they'd say oh you know go in there and steal what we can and uh just a really messed up time and you know probably i don't even know if i could get into the hospital to see him or whatever they'd probably try to make me wear a face mask or lord only knows what so um just keep me in your prayers please as we go through that thing um another big piece of news i will be finishing the final chapter of my first book that will be published um, it's a bigger book, so I'm not going to be able to self-publish it, but um, I'm on the final chapter, 21 chapters. And uh, so that 
probably should be done before the end of the year, but I don't know how it's going to go. I'm working as hard as I can on it, but uh, trying to get that done. So um, please do pray for that as well. Um, but uh, just, brethren, the humility thing uh, is such an important one. I think that that's a, it's sort of, uh, you know, if I could say the top 10 most important things in the life of a Christian, Humility, it would definitely be in that top 10 list. Uh, there are times that you're going to take some really good stands and whatever else you think, and you're going to find out that they were wrong, and you have to humble yourself and admit to being wrong and lower your pride and just say, I'm sorry I was wrong in that. Um, I could keep going on here, but I think that by now you hopefully understand what I'm saying. So... Um, Going to have a few more studies coming out this year yet, here in the month of December. But uh, I guess that'll be it for now. So thank you very much to everybody out there for your support. Thank you to everybody out there that's donated. Um, I had some you know, real blessings with that here in the last month or so, and I really do thank you for that. Um, again, some other big announcement type of stuff coming up in the future on... Um, some of our plans for the future, but I'm not going to get into that right now. But uh, thank you to everybody out there for your prayers, and um, I guess we'll see you in the next study.